This is the car that we're using for the budget build video. It's a, you know, just like my first hot rod. It's a G body cutlass. Can't beat it. Uh, I always see people talking about inflation prices and how much the cars have gone up and stuff, but there's still deals out there. I bought this car last year in 2021 over the summer for $400. I found it on Craigslist. Uh, the car is really bad, um, but it's here now. And uh, this is a great platform of cars to budget build. Um, you know, it's probably not your dream car. You're probably dreaming of a Corvette or a Camaro, a 240, a BMW, I have no idea, a GTO. Uh, you know, my dream car when I was in high school was the Chevelle, but I couldn't afford them, so I got one of these. Uh, there's a lot of platforms out there that can be built uh, on, you know, done a lot with on a tight budget. The G bodies are my personal favorites, uh, but an S10, um, you know, uh, uh, and if you want a Fox body, everyone says how expensive Fox bodies are. Maybe you don't need a Mustang. You can get a Thunderbird. I personally think the Thunderbirds are cooler than the Mustangs, um, and you can find those cheap. Uh, any sort of older cars that are obscure, there's lots of deals out on, on them, and, you know, they need saving, and they can be bought for uh, cheap and built for cheap. Um, you know, so I'm going to take what I've learned from the past and apply it to this car, but in a different way, more on a basis of uh, getting the car out there and having fun with it. So in its current state, it's actually looking all right, but just to give an idea of how gross this car was when I first started on it, all of that most nest just came out of the inside of the trunk. Luckily, all this was rotted, but I had to cut a couple access holes to get it out. But yeah, just from in the trunk, this whole entire car. But it's actually a decent looking car now from a starting point. Got my big Pro Mod. Weight reduction AC box in here. Oh yeah, real race car stuff. But missing floors, but don't be afraid to start with something rough. This thing was disgusting. You wouldn't have wanted to touch it. Now it's cleaned up into somewhat of a solid starting point, but yuck. No fear here. Yeah, I'm better at working than I am at making videos and of course I didn't get a good before shot but I just wanted to show just how gross this thing was. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah it's inside the AC box. Look at these seats and everything. Gross. Yuck. I mean a good G-body roller though is like you know I don't know what it is in your area but around here you might be paying couple grand for a good one so you know is it worth it to buy a car like this for four hundred dollars and go through it it might be I don't know you tell me with one of these g-body cars going from a v6 to a v8 you gotta switch the frame stands I already uh, took them off on this car and luckily I had another set of v8 ones laying around in the dirt for the last like six years so it didn't cost me anything but you can typically find these for like I don't know, maybe like 50 bucks on Marketplace or get some aftermarket ones cheap. Or if you're uh, not a dickhead, you can reach out to me and I actually have another set I might even send out to you. But anyway, so cutting the bolts cost me uh, $6, smooth move. And uh, I got a $35 AC uh, block off plate going on underneath the hood so far. So that's it. But this is the engine that came out of it. It's a 231 38 uh, V6 with a I believe it's called a TH200C transmission behind it. Uh, it's the same dimensionally as a Turbo 350, it's just electronically controlled. Uh, so that's what makes it so easy to uh, adapt the V8 and Turbo 350 in place of this. Um, you know, you just have to move the mouse forward like I showed you. This was a non-running motor. It cranked over and stuff, but it had been sitting for a long time. And you can just see how bad the mice were into this whole car. They were all over the motor, the trans. I think it was just disgusting, but that's how we ended up with this for so cheap. Uh, this 400 that's going into it, it's not a powerhouse, but it's a huge improvement over this thing, that's for sure. This is the motor and trans that's going in the car. Uh, it's a 400 small block Chevy with a turbo 350 hooked behind it. Now you're gonna say, damn dude, how'd you do that so cheap? Well, as you can see, this transmission had some issues. Good thing I'm a welder and I fixed that up. Uh, the guy took it out, he saw the crack, he upgraded to a turbo 400, whatever. It's been sitting in my backyard for a couple of years. I honestly don't even know if the thing's good, but the tranny that came off of this motor leaks like you wouldn't believe. Um, the motor runs well, it's weak, but whatever. It'll get this thing moving around in my yard. Um, and how I got this was I did a little bit of a labor trade with a friend. 
Um, you know, same thing as this. This was also a part of a labor trade. And I ended up with this set up for no money. Um, now, that deal's not always going to be there, but there's other ways of um, getting cheap drivetrains. Parts cars is one of the best ways of doing it. I've ended up with free engines, transmissions. Uh, I've even, you know, profited and ended up with drivetrains. Uh, depending on you know how the deal works out or whatever so a traditional small block Chevy like this you could get a van uh, you know a Tahoe a, a pickup truck a square body part the thing out uh, get your money back and end up with a free drivetrain to get you going make some V8 sounds well hey the motors in the car and I'm wearing a different shitty shirt I've spent all day yesterday trying to get this thing in here this motor came out of a first-gen F body which has a different style upper motor mount um, so those didn't work uh, I went digging around in the backyard trying to find uh, another set of upper mounts, but the which I found. I thought I was going to be lucky, but they came off of a truck, which has different spacing. So um, I went out reaching out, and a buddy got me for, these are the truck ones, but uh, he got me for a set of the right ones for 25 bucks, the, um, and he also got me another 50 for a uh, uh, front sway bar and steering box of a Monte Carlo SS. It's a bigger bar and a faster steering box, because we're going to make a race car out of this thing. Thanks for the good deals, Joe. Um, so 75 there total, and I had to spend $8 on bolts today on the transmission cross member. So, but it's in there. Cool, we got a Chevy uh, V8 and our Oldsmobile. Nice. Out here plugging away on this thing. We're using these headers that came off of uh, the swap car. They're really hot. <laughs> But they were free and they work. I'd probably rather use manifolds at this point, honestly. But that's okay. We're using what we uh, what we got. So I had to get a oil dipstick tube last night because the old one broke uh, upon removal, and I had to get some RTV and stuff to glue these headers on. So that's like another uh, thirty something bucks there. The nickel and dime stuff. They add up fast on these little projects, but uh, I'll get an actual uh, tally at the end of it of you know what it costs to get this thing going getting ready to do the fuel system on the car and I figured I'd take a minute to talk about how important it is to do smart shopping on the cars especially when you're building them on a budget so last night I was at the auto parts store picking up parts and I was gonna get uh, plugs because I'm getting rid of the heat in the car so I had to plug up the ports uh, they have like some Spectre brand plug kit it was like $20 for the plugs and it only had two of the half inch MPT that I needed so I went to Lowe's and I got uh, regular pipe plugs for the three that I needed, they were like two dollars a piece. So you know, for six dollars, it ended up being a third of the cost, and I got more of what I needed. Uh, and that applies to the builds the whole way through. So those three plugs, a bolt for the starter, it ended up costing like ten something dollars at the hardware store. Now onto the fuel system uh, with these old carbureted engines, it's awesome. You just have to get a hard line. If it's got a, me a mechanical fuel pump, you don't even need a return or anything. It just takes what it wants. And uh, so for $40, not even, uh, I think that the fuel, yeah, it was like 40 bucks, I think, for, for the fuel line, 35, something like that. And I'm using this fuel cell, which I hate. Um, it doesn't work well, but I have it, it's free. Um, and if you're saying, oh, well, you already had it, well, guess what, I have another trashy plastic fuel cell that's been on Marketplace for $20 for over a year that I would love to give to some hot rodder who's just starting out. So anyway, um, $40. How do you beat that? I know guys who have more money in their AN lines on their builds than I'll have into this entire car. It's wet and cold out today, but being November in Massachusetts, it's only going to get worse. So we're, we're, so we're taking advantage of what time we have to do what we can. Uh, this is the radiator from the same uh, Camaro donor, and it's not going to be in here like permanently. This is just to get the car kind of going in case I want to move it around the yard. Uh, do my initial startup, you know, get it on and off the trailer into the shop or whatever for the next batch of work. So I'm really trying to uh, get it running uh, and we're using what we got. Um, the core support on this thing is really just terrible. It's all rotted and stuff and it doesn't even hold the weight of the radiator, you know, without anything in it. So we're going to have to address that, but it'll at least get it running. The uh, previous owner told me that, you know, he got it from like a junkyard. And he said that they were like rallying the car around there. And I believe it because of the uh, broken coil spring and how hammered up the bottom of the oil pan and everything was. Also going to get some of this wiring, uh, the headlight harness laid out and out of the way just to kind of clean it up and give a better look of what we need to do to button everything up. So just moving along, doing what we can. Alright, the temporary fuel system is all in there and hooked up. I looped uh, the transmission lines just as a temporary thing to 
just to, so I can start it and see if the gear, any of the gears work in this. The radiator's in here. The battery's in here. I had to get a new dipstick tube because the other one had a hole in it. But everything's all wired and stuff, so um, we're going to do our first uh, test fire here. This is exciting. There's no fuel in the system, so we're going to give it a little shot of ether to get it up there. And not the right thing, but it works. hasn't run since 1996 and never with a V8. The, uh, this thing only makes like a hundred horse, but wow, see that thing shaking the whole trailer? Whew, that's cool. drove and it drove onto the trailer that's awesome it sounds like it might be a little low on transmission fluid but we'll mess around with that another day uh, I got it up onto the trailer because I'm gonna bring it down to my garage I've never had the ability of using a shop before so I'm gonna take advantage of the situation now that it runs and drives the um, and I'm gonna split this video here because the goal of this video was getting it running and driving and moving so that I could bring it down to the garage and I'll give a split down of um, like the cost and stuff so I paid four hundred dollars for this car and I spent probably another, you know, two hundred and eighty dollars or so, um, and worked a bunch of trades. So for six hundred and eighty dollars, I have a running, driving V8 swapped Oldsmobile Cutlass G body. This car has been dead since 1996, and it's been, you know, completely forgotten about. And the car was disgusting, you know, full of mice. Uh, it was gross inside, and now we have you know, a solid starting point. The car is not a show winner or anything like that, but this is really um, an every man's hot rod car. I built everything up to this point to get it running and driving in the driveway, in the dirt, with hand tools. And even when I bring it to my shop, I'll still be working on the ground with the hand tools. Um, but I, I wanna split the video here because uh, the other parts and components that I have are they kind of it falls into different categories and some of it's in the upgrades and stuff like that um, So you can follow along for those 